If there's one thing that scares the pants off most senior executives in the food and consumer goods industries, it's negative sentiment about their brand going viral over social media. Most feel powerless to stop it or are quickly overwhelmed. Most companies now use social media, but that use is limited to positive messages. When it comes to product recalls, the general consensus seems to be that the least said, the better. This is the wrong approach to incidents and product recalls and almost guarantees that negative sentiment will escalate and more likely to create a crisis. Welcome to Recall q and I'm Steve Hather, Director of the Recall Institute, and I've been involved in managing incidents and product recalls and preventing crises for just over 25 years for some of the world's largest companies like Coca-Cola through to small businesses. You see, incidents and product recalls increase consumer concern and uncertainty. They drive demand for more information. Companies that don't engage leave an information vacuum that is often filled with misinformation and negative sentiment that can quickly go viral. It often appears that the company doesn't know what it's doing or doesn't care or both. On the other hand, companies that engage in a conversation enable them to provide accurate information and correct inaccuracies, clarify and answer questions, and demonstrate concern. Social media does not have the filter of a professional journalist anymore. You can't expect a fair hearing. The only way for consumers to get an accurate picture of what happened, what they should be doing about it, and what you are doing about it, is to tell them. In fact, studies support the view that engaging over social media decreases the negative impact of incidents and recalls on some longer term indicators such as ongoing sales and shareholder value. A study of 405 product recalls in the US released in 2015 by Boston College showed negative impact on the share price of companies decreased for those that engaged with consumers over social media. A study of reputational crises between 2000 and 2018 by Pentland Analytics and Aon Insurance indicates that social media has doubled the impact of a crisis on shareholder value, both positive and negative. Those that managed well gained 20% in shareholder value over the following year. Those that managed poorly lost 30% in the year following the crisis. And if we take a cue from the hospitality industry, arguably one of the most sensitive to social media reviews, a study by Cornell University in 2016 shows that reputation and ongoing sales is as much influenced by a company's response to negative reviews about it as it is by responses to positive reviews. Failure to respond at all is the most costly. The important thing to remember about social media is that it's social. That means people look to social media to engage, to form a relationship. It's not a one-way conversation. Sticking a four-page statement full of standard PR crap that we continue to hear when it comes to consumer safety incidents is just not going to cut it. In the old days, if I had a problem with your product, I'd call you. How you respond would determine what I think of you and whether I'll continue to buy your products. If I wasn't happy, it was said that I would tell 10 people, my family and friends perhaps, now if I have a problem, I'm more likely to put it on your Facebook page, and if you don't have one, I'll put it on one of the many online discussion forums. Now there are many more people, perhaps hundreds or even thousands, watching your response and making their decisions about you and your products accordingly. Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, recently said that an unhappy consumer will tell six, but in the days of social media, they'll tell 600. Social media is still a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but with many watching. But I understand that social media can be seen as a double-edged sword. Many more people see negative commentary, but you also have an opportunity to get a positive message across. So one of the key attributes of your products and brand is safety and quality, yet few companies choose to use social media as an opportunity to reiterate those attributes when it comes to incidents and recalls. Now, wait a minute, I hear you say. Isn't a recall an admission of a lack of safety or quality? Well, actually, a study done by Princeton 
Princeton University in the United States of US consumers' responses to brands involved in a product recall shows 91% understand that even reputable companies will make mistakes and 87% would be even more likely to buy from them if they handle the recall honorably and responsibly. So I would urge you to rethink your current approach to social media and its use in incidents and product recalls. People will be talking about your products and your brand, whether you like it or not. See, so you have a choice. Address their questions and concerns or let others spread the negative sentiment and misinformation unheeded. Use it as an opportunity to reiterate that you may well have made a mistake, but you're doing something about it that you do know what you're doing and you are concerned about it. Social media strategy has to be a key part of your product recall and crisis prevention program. If you have a question about product recall or crisis management, please leave them in the comments section below and I will try to answer it in an upcoming post. If you thought the information in this post was valuable, please give me a thumbs up below and share this with anyone you think may find it useful. You can also subscribe to our channel to keep up with all the information that we're going to be providing on product recall and crisis management. If you'd like to be better prepared for product recalls and crisis prevention, including creating an effective social media strategy, you can download our free guide to crisis prevention the four P's of preparation right below. So thanks for watching Recall Q&A and hopefully I'll see you soon.